We find in the words of Isaiah 41 and 10 on the front of the bulletin. If you would just follow along, we will read that and go into the service. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous arm. With my righteous hand. Amen. Amen. The memorial of the services has followed. <clears throat> I am a Pastor I. W. Freeman, and I am officiating this service. We have a congregational hymn, followed by a prayer and scripture. A congregational song, and one of my favorite songs is Precious Memories. <laughs> a congregational song, after that, the reading of the obituary, and a selection, and we're closing with prayer. Amen? Amen. Please take your seats. We'll start with our congregational uh, song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to build our congregational song. Um, I'm not a singer, but as somebody who's helped me sing, I'm going to sing Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 And then God is a good God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Here we go. One, two, three.
Tribute wall, how, how special he is. Um, I really don't know where to start because I said like I got something all weekend, uh, all week long, different things. I said, well, you know, what I want to, I want to say about Sean. You know, I can say some good. I can say some things that's not so good. I can say some things that's funny and some things that that's out that made me mad. And just to think of what to say. Uh, made me miss him even more, you know, all the, because it was Sean, you know, when you think about it, Sean was just being Sean. <laughs> but I want to start with uh, when I brought him down here, because that's when I really got a chance to bond with him, because uh, when I left to go in the military, I think he was nine years old or ten years old, and uh, I had the call for uh, 21 years, and so I didn't grow up around him. But he came down here, and that's when I started bonding with him. And I was like, hey, I got my brother here. I'll be glad, you know? Glad to have him here. Uh, I remember when Sean, now my, my wife and I had been working because when Sean got here, Sean didn't have a job, so he was home all the time. And uh, the kids was going to school. But when we and my wife got off work, you know, Sean would have dinner fix and the table spread and I said, oh, he's gonna work out fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know, he's cooking and everything. And what this was Sean would do, you know, when the family's getting down and getting to eat, come on, Sean, work with your plate. You know, I'm probably, okay. You know, you know, you cook, you taste them, you, you fix your plates, so I figured he ate before we got home. So he cooked so much that we had a lot of leftovers for the next day. The next day we get off work and coming in there, Shiny cook. So I was going, you know, we warm up something. Look at the refrigerator. Hey, where the food at? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's supposed to happen with Sean. He'll go on, he'll cook, because he wants to eat, so he'll cook. He don't want you to get mad or whatever, so he'll cook enough for you. He won't eat with you. You eat what you eat. But you better get full because he's going to eat the rest of So, you know, and another, another one of my 
favorite. This is one of my favorites of Sean. His first, his, he was celebrating his first birthday here in, in Texas with us. So Sean always walked. He'll go walk. And so I didn't, I was worried about him because he didn't know where he was at. And that's, that's what Sean does. And so I said, I'm going to give him a cell phone. Gave Sean a cell phone. This is his first cell phone. And he went and he took it and thanked us and went on in his room. Then he comes back to us, we watching TV, he comes back to his family talking on the on the cell phone. Just talking and laughing, you know, having a good time, and walk back by and having a good time. And came back two or three times. And so it dawned on me, I said, Oh, he knows how to activate this, huh? <laughs> so I went in there and said, Sean, did you activate it? What? <laughs> what? I said, did you activate it? He didn't know. I said, give me the phone. You know, he holds these conversations. His phone wasn't even activated. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that's Sean. That, that's, that, that's Sean. He just, he'll keep you laughing. He, he was fun. He was, like my sister Cheryl said on the film, he knows how to get on your nerves. You know, he, he, he can get on your nerves. But, you know, I think about all the time he did get on my nerves. And, uh, I think if he didn't, I don't even know if it would be Sean. You know, because uh, everybody in the family says the same thing. From when he was small all the way, you know, to, to now. You know, it's just, you know, Sean didn't know how to do that, but but that that's that's Sean. That's Sean. And uh, I kind of hate the fact that he didn't have any children. That he was never married, you know. My sister just brought it out to me that all we have is his memories, you know, and our relationships with him, you know, our conversations, our laughter with him, our arguments with him, our frustrations with him. Uh, that's how he lived his life. That's how he shared his life. And that's all we have now that he's gone is the memories that he left us with. We have anyone else to ask? Let us give an honor unto God and His ministry. Uh, I'm I'm Tanya. I'm Sean's service coordinator. So, um, <laughs> like Anthony said that. Sean have a way of like, you know, he 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 he, he love him one minute and the next minute you mad. <laughs> Sean would call me, oh, every day, two and three times a day. I said, Sean, you have me get my numbers because you know, working where I work at, I have to have a hundred percent A's and a hundred percent B's. And uh, Sean helped me get my 100% with my bees <laughs> so that, you know, if I don't talk to no one else and if I talk to Sean and all the uh, contacts, the bee contacts that I get with Sean, then I don't have a time, I don't get enough time to talk to everybody else. And I had to let Sean know, Sean, you're not just my only client. <laughs> Sean would call and he'll get someone else to call me and everything, and you, you know, because Sean read lips. And he would say, uh, Miss Tanya, I can't hear you. But when I say something about money, Sean heard everything that I said. Everything that I said, Sean heard about the money. And um, I used to give Sean rides to go to get, take his, to get him his allowance and because I was his, uh, his rent payee. I paid his bills and everything. And uh, one day we was on the highway, we was on our way from his apartment to Temple and everything so that we can go and get him a cell phone. And uh, we was talking and everything. He looked over at me. He said, I like the way your car rides. And I said, well, thank you, Sean. He said, why don't you just pull over and let me drive? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mr. Sean, you're not going to get to drive my car. I understand you have a driving license and all of that stuff, but you would not get to drive this car. <laughs> because I have, but like, it's like a like a race car. You can put it in a certain speed and hit the hit the gears on it, and it's gonna take off. Like Mr. Sean, I said, who taught you how to drive anyway? <laughs> and he was just telling me that you know, growing up and everything, that you know he learned how to drive and everything. And you know, I'm gonna miss Sean. Yeah. I am. I'm gonna miss Sean. And 
and uh, I can recall when I first got with him and everything last year, and they gave him to me because Sean was a tough cookie. Mm -hmm. And all the young girls that's coming in and everything, they didn't want to give Sean him you know, because Sean gonna basically run over. Mm -hmm. And with me having 30 years in this in this field and everything, I had pretty much more experience than the young girls that was just coming fresh out of uh, college and everything. And it was amazing because Sean got mad and uh, it was, I had surgery, so I was out for like two months. And when I came back, the person that took over my caseload didn't distribute his allowance in the correct way, so they left a gap there. So Sean became upset with me, and so he called the uh, my administrator and told me he was firing me. <laughs> I told him, I said, Sean, I said, you can't fire me. I said, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I said, Mr. Lumpkin, I say the same way that I give you respect, that's the way that I won't respect that. And so then, Sean, we became very close. He started understanding that he couldn't get over on Tungy like he did with everybody else. And you know, and I'm just, I'm really gonna miss you. You know, and um, my last time seeing Sean was on September the 18th when I went to go get him his allowance. And when I went back to visit him and everything a week later for his allowance, I knew something wasn't right. I knew it wasn't something right. Because that's the type of relationship me and Sean had. He had the blinds open and he's gonna no see when I come up and I knock and he said, just give me a second, let me put some clothes on. And so um, I called Anthony and I said, Anthony, something ain't right. I said, I'm gonna go back and get someone. I went back and I seen, you know, and I asked for a welfare check and, and went into the home and said, Mr. Sean Holmes is no longer with us. That hurt my heart. That hurt my heart because as a service coordinator, I go above and beyond services to ensure that my individual receive the services they receive. And even though Deshaun was a headache to most people and everything, but he was he wasn't my headache. He was my calling because this is my calling. Yes. It's to ensure that a family member's family is protected well and hurt. And as a service coordinator, I believe I did everything that I was supposed to do with Deshaun. And that I'm truly grateful for. I'm truly grateful to being able to have a relationship with you. Anthony and everything because every time I look at you now without the mask on, I'm looking at Sean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at Sean. And just to see the pictures of Sean and everything. Sean was a very nice, just looking gentleman and everything. And I just want the family to know that you all are in my prayer. And Sean memories with me will forever linger on with me. Thank you. God bless you. Sean was indeed wonderful person. Amen. 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 You just have to know him. I met Sean once before at uh, ATV. And I couldn't get out of there fast enough. <laughs> Sean, Sean just kept calling me, preaching. Preacher, preacher, this is that, this is that. Yeah, man, yeah. yeah. Want to go get some? <laughs> but, uh, you gotta understand. You gotta learn. We have to learn how to love people while they're here. Amen. Sean was a wonderful person in his own right. He was a wonderful person. And we are all going to miss him here. Amen? Amen. So far, <laughs> that that is Uncle John. Um, I'm not gonna take up too much time, but I'm gonna do a little piece for everybody. Um, just to make sure all he's preoccupied. <laughs> uh, I'll do a piece for Jack, and then I'll finish with this uh, New Testament scripture, very dear to my heart. So hopefully, I don't take up too much time. We'll start with me, Sean. <laughs> Let's start with Michelle, our favorite memory of Uncle Sean. <laughs> Y'all remember that time Uncle Sean ate Michelle's brownie? <laughs> <laughs> for those of y'all that weren't in the house, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. 
I think we, we came from some restaurant, you know, Sunday afternoon, you go get something to eat. And, and <laughs> you go get something to eat. And uh, Misha had brought back this big, nice brownie. Just nice. You know, picked it out just for yourself. You know, just real thick, real nice. Had it all wrapped up for him by the place. And we came home. And we sat it on the corner. And we went on about our business. Now, the back story of this is there's Lumpkin, and then there's those East Coast Lumpkins. <laughs> now, we were raised correctly. You know, watch our food, keep our food, eat your food, watch your leftovers. We were raised the Lumpkin way. Now, don't, don't, don't fault us. We were raised the Lumpkin way. Those East Coast Lumpkins? <laughs> That's a whole nother breed. We, we have prep people that come to the family reunions. Whatever you get, you better get it, you better watch it, you better eat it. They're not going to play with you. Now, all these people got good jobs. I'm, I'm telling you, y'all. I'm telling on y'all. They got great jobs. There's no reason for them to act like this. Right. But they do. Back to the story. Just so y'all know, I want y'all to frame this correctly. So, this brownie is sitting on this counter. We know it's Michelle's brownie. Uncle Sean was with us for those that want to defend him. <laughs> he said, you know this was his brownie. And so Michelle said, don't touch, you know, we got other things we're getting ready to do, we're getting ready to eat, getting to do. Sean's just walking through the house, everybody's doing fine. Next thing we know, Michelle comes to that corner where that brownie's been this entire time. <laughs> Gets to cutting up in the house. Where's my brownie? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It's on the counter. No, 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 no. Where's my brownie? Who, which one of y'all took my brownie? Start charging me, Sean. We don't know what you're talking about. Did you lose your brownie? No, I put that brownie right there. I told you I'm to take my brownie. Where's my brownie? He's so mad, he's charging up everybody in the house. <laughs> you ain't my brownie? Brother, no, I ain't eat your brownie. Don't you lie to me? Where's my brownie? Ja, you ain't my brownie? No. This time I knew he was mad. He asked Dad. Did you eat my brownie? <laughs> <laughs> I said, if somebody's gonna die, I'm okay. <laughs> Yes, around what you talking about? Then it all dawned on us. Where's Uncle Sean? <laughs> Uncle Sean was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he has snuck in there, closed the door, <laughs> turned the light on, and the fan. <laughs> had been in there this entire time. <laughs> Heard him hollering about this brownie. Waited till five minutes after the revelation hit me, Shaw, that his brownie is not coming back. <laughs> Came out the bathroom, had another flush the toilet. <laughs> Came out the bathroom. Everybody all right? Y'all all right? Hey, Misha, how you doing? <laughs> now, you know Misha, Misha's a patient, level-headed man. <laughs> he ain't talked to Uncle Sean for at least a week. <laughs> and that is the story of Uncle Sean and the brownie. It was gone. We, we, didn't, we didn't see him take it. We didn't see him move. It was East Coast Lumpkins. Lumpkin, check to see where they're from. They're from the East Coast. Eat before you get there. So, uh, second is a, is a poem that we've always grown up with. And I'll read this on behalf of John. It's called the, the Clock of Life. And it reads, the clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to tell just when the hand will stop, at late or early hour. To lose one's wealth is sad indeed. To lose one's health is more. But to lose one's soul is such a loss that no man can restore. The present only is our own, so live Love, toil with the will. Place no faith in tomorrow, for the clock may then be still. Finishing up, I'll read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 57. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. 
our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank God. I'm going to say it again. But thank God. Yes. He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and most of all the doing of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We want to say. Come on, sing it. Come on and sing it. Ooh, we want to sing Sean was the second son and the seventh child out of nine siblings. He attended school at Clark Elementary and he was self-trained to skill skillfully study lip reading, which specializes in perceiving what a person is saying by observing the movements of the lips. Sean attended Annie Fisher School to learn the trade as a printer. Sean's first job was as a maintenance custodian at Stowe Village Community Center. From that point on, he began to enjoy having money in his pockets and had a big delight in spending his earnings at the first opportunity. He, even, he eventually developed 
a giving heart and willing spirit to share what he had with others or help someone in doing odd jobs. One thing he most enjoyed was car washing and could put any professional auto detailer to shame for trying. Sean was a very friendly person and extremely sociable. He could easily hold a conversation with practically anyone without giving it a second thought. He was known for taking long walks and rising early to start the day. Reading the daily newspaper and watching TV kept him informed of the latest news about sports, social events, and commercial developments in various areas. His favorite football team was the Pittsburgh Steelers, but would often change his mind to another competitor if the players were not winning. <laughs> Sean had a strong desire to succeed in all his endeavors. He would eventually try over again to achieve the aim or results he wanted to meet to his satisfaction. In 2005, Sean re relocated to Texas to embark upon new beginnings. He was most ambitious and independent to learn of his new surroundings. It didn't take him long to be familiar with places and landmarks throughout the local community. Sean was not at a loss for places to go or words to say. He attended religious meetings and church services. Sean had a respect for humility, for prayer. He would listen intensely to the sermons. At times, he would ask for prayer and strongly believe things would change for the better because of it. He took pride in shopping and enjoyed be buying groceries. Big, big dinners, right? <laughs> Sean liked buying business suits and casual wear when prepping to go to special occasions and social events. He had many hobbies. Sean was the kind of man who enjoyed cooking and eating, like he did with Michelle Brown. <laughs> A few of his favorite recipes were fried cabbage, seasoned chicken, and buttered cornbread. It was rare for him to refuse any meals. The family gatherings and cookouts were most enjoyable to him. He mingled with the crowd and took an interest in playing cards. Sean would often miss the people of Hartford, Connecticut. Hello. <laughs> he showed a special love for his mother and would call frequently just to hear her voice on the phone. Sean was well known for timeliness and punctuality everywhere he went. He became a human alarm clock to those of him, those of, to those who knew him, excuse me, for he believed in being on time and would call to verify the progress of your arrival. That's why he kept the windows open to see when you were coming, huh? <laughs> he had to make sure you were on time. <laughs> he kept a good track of your holidays and family birthdays well in advance. His own birthday was so important to him and he celebrated yearly in such a special way. Sean was reliable on the job and would put forth his best efforts at the workplace from start to finish. He was employed at various places, including PC services, as a cafeteria dishwasher for Darnell, is that Darnell? Darnell Army Medical Center at Fort Hood, Texas, a Piccadilly restaurant, and Pignetti's Fine Dining in the local area. Sean passed away from this earthly life at the age of 59. Preceded in death is his father and one sister, Demita Dee Dee Lumpkin, and brother, Victor Sutherland. Precious memories will be cherished by Sean's mother, Mae Willie Lumpkin, brothers and sisters of the Lumpkin family, to include Geraldine Norman, Pamela Thomas, Pamela and Thomas Bell, Anthony and Cleoria Lumpkin, Cheryl and Gerald Samuels, Sharon and Nettie Lumpkin McGriff, Kenyatta Lumpkin with Ken and Vanessa, uh, let's see, Terrence, which is Terry and Carolyn Lumpkin, and sister Carla Cookie Bryant. A host of kinfolks include one aunt, classic, uh, nieces, cousins, and nephews who share this time of bereavement along with friends, co-workers, and acquaintances who will miss him deeply. Thank you.
Wonderful, wonderful. God had a busy life, didn't he? <laughs> Amen. We're now having a selection. Day selection. And we'll close this all in prayer. Is there anyone else that want to say anything first of all? Yes, I did not. Before we close this off, I would like to uh, give a tribute to Sean from the family here, the family in Connecticut, and all his friends abroad, because he has a lot of friends scattered everywhere. And I know they would love to have come and been a part of this, but since they couldn't, and they did post things on this tribute wall, and left uh, plenty of comments and phone calls to family, and giving their condolences, I do want to, uh, Somehow I'll pass this on to Sean. We thought of you. To, we thought of you with love today, but that's that. But that is nothing new. We thought about you yesterday and days before that too. We think about you in silence, and we often speak your name. Now all we have is memories and your picture in a frame. Your memory is our keepsake, which we will never part. God has you in his hands, and we have you in our hearts. We love you, Sean, and we miss you. Rest in peace.
Thank you, Lord. I'll give you a second minute or two to look at the viewers. Just a little bit shot there. Merciful Savior, Almighty God, we're grateful to have shared in this life, shall and love. Mighty God, we thank you so much for giving him the opportunity to come into this life as you've given us. It is our prayer, Lord God, that we would not squander your time that we will make it as you would have it to be. And Father God, we thank you so much for your loving kindness, for many blessings and the benefits that I've given. We thank you so much, so much, Lord, for the opportunity to have spent time, to have shared our lives as individuals with Sean Lumley. We thank you, we praise you. Now that he's gone home, Lord God, we are grateful to you. We believe and we receive now him as a part of your spiritual kingdom, Lord God. And we know, we know, Lord God, 
that he's resting. Bless now his family. Bless the Lumpkins family. And everyone, Lord God, that's here as a part of this service. We do thank you, Lord God, for, for the many blessings and benefits you've given. And as we prepare to exit out of this place, but never your presence, be with us now. Put your arms all around us. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Will you kindly? I can't say a hug. Hug somebody. Shake somebody's hand. God bless you.